dedicate ourselves to the effort of closing uh, abortion clinics, closing uh, all abortion clinics, and making Huntsville abortion free. Amen. And I know Amen. you agree with me that most of all, the Lord has called each one of us to be Christian witnesses of the grace and truth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Some of you guys act like it all the In time. our group today are some true heroes of the pro-life movement who have stood faithfully. Would someone call the police? Uh, But I believe that uh, we'll continue, and please ignore the, the rude distraction uh, as we continue today. Uh, today, some of you we've known for over 20 years. You don't like to be called heroes, I know. But you've stood faithfully for many, many years on the sidewalks at several Huntsville abortion mills. You've been there in all kinds of weather. You've faced the worst kind of treatment. You stood, you prayed, you counseled, despite the smoke pots, the duck calls, the verbal abuse, even threats of physical abuse, and false charges that could have led to arrest, and even one uh, arrest that was the result of false charges. But I believe today that everyone here who has stood for life is special in the Lord's eyes. Some of us have been labeled as so-called anti-choice bullies. We've been made targets with our pictures and our home addresses uh, posted on the internet so we would be easy to find. But the message from that to everyone who might be involved in that, it didn't work. And it's not going to work because nothing is going to stop the work of this group in standing for life, standing uncompromisingly against every abortion for any reason. And we stand together, and we will not be deterred. Amen. Amen. It was important to my dad that people understand how the Bible applies to abortion, politics, and every area of life. I think he wanted people to understand how it is that saving babies fits into the mission of expanding God's kingdom according to the Bible. What goal are we trying to accomplish by saving the lives of children? Remember that as terrible as abortion is in every case, there are worse things that could happen to a person. Even Jesus said that it had been better for Judas if he hadn't been born. What is our goal for children after they are spared in abortion? Do we want them to be brainwashed at public school? in the Church of Secular Humanism? Do you want them to grow up to vote for leaders to take away our freedoms, to vote for IRS agents that will take money away from us to pay for socialism? Do we want them to be spared an abortion so they can be baptized in a worthless effort to wash away their sins and think they can earn merit by taking part in a mass which shamefully crucifies Christ over again or be saved by their own works? No, these children need to know the gospel, that Jesus Christ lived a perfect life and it is His righteousness imputed to us by God's grace that saves us, not our works that are potentially approved upon by Christ's efforts. That's why my Father is in heaven today, because God's grace. For a time will come, and is coming, when people will, come, will not endure sound teaching. Now we have just heard sound teaching. God made the heavens and the earth and everything in it. But having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own likings. They will turn away from listening to the truth and wander into myths. Some translations say fables. I kind of prefer fables. The dominant fable in our culture is evolution. Evolution says everything came here without God, just by naturalistic forces. Everything. Now if that's true, we're not made in the image and likeness of God. And we can do, we can make the rules. We can say what is right and wrong. As the United States Supreme Court did, 
in January 22nd, 1973, in the Roe v. Wade decision. They divorced humanity from personhood. Inconceivable. <laughs>